Welcome to the Learn to Quilt series from Shabby Fabrics. My name is Jennifer Bosworth. I'll be teaching you how to make your very first quilt. So first off, congratulations on wanting to learn how to quilt. For me, it's been one of the most exciting things I've ever done in my life. It's been one of the most useful things as well. I've been quilting now for about 20 years. Um, I got interested in quilting when I was younger. And you know what? The passion and love of quilting has just grown year over year and I continue to learn new things. So this is just the very beginning. We'll be learning a new vocabulary. We'll be learning the anatomy of quilting. We'll get to see some fabric. We're gonna be on a really exciting journey together. Um, I'm excited to teach you how to quilt. And again, this is just the beginning. Now be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is a multi-part series. We'll be taking you baby steps through your first, pro, uh, first quilt. So of course, we're gonna give you a little bit and you're gonna progress each week and there'll be a new video. When you subscribe to YouTube, that way you know when the new videos are out. And if you haven't been to the Shabby Fabrics website, I encourage you to go there. There's so much to see. It is truly a quilter's playground in paradise of beautiful array of products from quilting supplies and of course, a beautiful array of fabrics as well. Now, the great news about quilting is that it's really easy to learn. You just need to learn some good habits and that's what I'll be working through with you. Um, now, the quilt behind us is what you'll be making. This is each, quilt, each block of the quilt, that's your very first quilting term. Each section of a quilt is actually referred to as a block. Um, you will be going through some basics notions we'll be talking about notions we'll be talking about fabric and then we'll be able to move into making your first block actually in your second video but we're going to get you all set up so that you have a good framework and you have a good set of supplies in order to make your first quilt now i also want to guide you to the shabby fabrics website at the very bottom there's a link that says free downloads just go there there will be a summary of each of our videos for this series and there's other projects there as well of course quilts lots of do-it-yourself crafty projects for the house um, and gift giving that are a lot of fun to make uh, as well so i you know i like to quilt but i also like to do lots of crafty things so you will be able to translate your knowledge of sewing and quilting into other things as well and it makes wonderful gifts as i said there is nothing that says i love you like the gift of a quilt it's the, one of the most endearing gifts that you could ever um, receive is definitely the gift of a quilt. Now I will be referring to my notes because I want to make sure I don't skip over anything. This is all important information for you to know. So I'll be referring to my notes often to make sure I didn't forget anything. Now let's talk about your next vocabulary word, a fabric stash. Um, quilters treasure trove of, of fabric is called a stash. If you are new to sewing and quilting, you might not have an array of fabrics to choose from already. For that reason, with the Learning to Quilt quilt, um, by the way, these fabrics are from a company called RJR Fabrics. There's many fabric manufacturers in the United States. Um, they are a, a high-end, reputable, uh, well-established manufacturing company. We have chosen their fabrics for the um, learn to quilt, quilt, and if you don't have a fabric stash or you want your quilt to look just like this, we have a kit available for you where you're going to be getting those exact fabrics. Um, and what's fun about that is we're including a bonus project. If you buy the kit, you will get the, what you need to make this adorable little coordinating pillow. And all of these shapes already have what's called the fusible webbing on the back and they're cut to the exact size, you literally peel the paper backing off, iron it down and stitch around. More about that later, but the idea is if you want to use your own fabric stash, by all means, you'll be able to do that. We're providing a download for you to do that. But if you want to have this quilt with the bonus project, just be sure to pick up our kit um, and everything that you'll be needing will be in there with the exception of batting. That will come much later in our discussion as we progress through our quilt. What is batting? I'm gonna only teach you what you need to know as we go along and so I don't overwhelm you. Now, of course, once you decide on your fabrics, you need to have certain tools 
to put your quilt together. These are called notions. Of course, you've got your sewing machine, right? You wanna do that unless you've decided to hand quilt. This is not about hand quilting. I'll be teaching you how to machine piece your quilt together. Um, you're going to want to use some notions. Now, you're going to want to use you know, a rotary mat. Let's talk about the most basic things about a quilter's um, basic needs. This is a 24 by 36 inch self-healing rotary mat. They do have different manufacturers. Um, this one is, a, this particular one is Ulfa. I've seen this at Joann's. I can't tell you how many times. I think Walmart even carries it. They come in various sizes, but because of the width of fabric, I strongly recommend you do not buy a mat smaller than um, 24 inches in this length and 36 um, in this, that's the width of the fabric and the length is 36 inches. So 24 by 36, just pick that up. Very important. And what you use in concert with a rotary mat is of course a rotary cutter. Now we've put together a notions kit. You can by all means go out and get all of your notions that you want, or maybe you have some, but we've put together a notions kit for you. I've been quilting again for 20 years. I've been able to use a variety of products and I've been able to settle on the ones that for me produce the best results. They're the most enjoyable to use. They hold up over time. This is the collection of notions. When you, you can purchase these individually on our website. If you buy the notions kit, we've given you a 10% discount. And in addition to the 10% discount, um, you'll also get a, a creative grids, two and a half by six and a half inch ruler. Um, we even have the shabby fabrics name on that. Again, this is a fabulous, these smaller rulers, as you're going to see, as we work through this are wonderful. You need a big ruler. This is a six by 24 inch ruler, but smaller rulers are also important. Um, and you also get the pink shabby fabrics pen. People love this pen. If you've ever had one before, um, you don't let people borrow your pen because they really enjoy that. So rather than me going through what each notion is, just know there's a notions kit. I encourage you to get that. If you do not have notions, again, you're going to save 10% by buying it all at once. And we're putting in some free goodies, the ruler and then the pink pen. So um, let's start talking about uh, good habits, right? Good habits equal beautiful quilts. It's again, learning some basic, um, basic disciplines and you just adhere to that every single time. So let's talk about the quilt itself. The elements of a quilt. We already learned the first term, which was a block. So in this particular quilt, there are six blocks. We're going to make the individual blocks. We're going to sew those blocks together. That's called a pieced quilt. Um, so just, that's another word for you to know. That's, a, that's called piecing. So we'll be doing piecing. Once those are sewn together, we frame that. And we usually frame it with two borders. One is the inner border and one is the outer border. Very logical. The back of the quilt is just called the backing. Again, very logical. And then the edge that kind of holds it all together is called the binding. So that's some of the most basic terms that I want to get you going on. There's obviously a lot more terms. Again, I'm going to give you what you need when you need it. And so I don't give you too much information ahead of time. Supplies, of course, a good sewing machine. You're going to need an ironing board and an iron. Uh, we talked about the 24 by 36 inch mat and then all of the other notions that go along with that. And you'll be seeing this, um, seeing me work through that as we step through the progress of this quilt. Now, it's nice to have a way to kind of store this in a set location. Some people have a pretty decorative box. They might have like a little sewing kit. But what I encourage you to do is put this in a location so that when you are blessed enough to be able to start sewing again, maybe after work or on the weekends, it's all in one location versus where did those scissors go and where did that rotary cutter go? I would also encourage you if you're going to be going to any kind of quilting retreats to put your name on your um, rulers and your rotary cutter, maybe even your scissors, because they, we often use the same supplies and they do get mixed up. I've definitely had that happen on a quilt retreat. Um, so now that we know that we need some good notions, obviously we need a sewing machine. I want to talk to you about fabric. 
that to me is where everything just comes alive. Um, we, of course, um, carry a large array of fabric here at Shabby Fabrics. If you go to the Shabby Fabrics site again, click on Fabrics and you'll have drop downs that are, you can search by collections, you can search by color, you can search by themes, and you can search by something called pre cuts. And what pre cuts are is just what the name implies pre cut fabric. So, what's nice about pre cut fabric um, is that it uh, is already cut to certain sizes for you. Now, before I kind of bring out some of my pre-cuts, one of the things that when I first got going quilting 20 years ago, I didn't have, I, I had an interest for it, but I didn't have a lot of extra money. And a friend of mine was a quilter um, and she gave me some of her scraps, which is a blessing. Let me, now that I'm a quilter, I know how much of a gift that really was. She gave me a bunch of red and white fabrics, kind of red and cream, and I really wanted to make a patriotic quilt for my dining room, and but I didn't have a blue. And I thought, well, and she kept talking to me about the quality of you know, the difference between big box store um, fabrics versus the quality of quilt shop fabrics. And I thought, well, yeah, but it's a lot less expensive if I take my coupon and I go buy from you know a big box store. Let me tell you, I'm gonna bring out this quilt and I'm gonna tell you, I don't even need to probably explain a whole lot more. This was a patriotic quilt. Again, I was given the red and cream fabrics from a friend, but I didn't have any blue. So I went and bought this beautiful blue. You can kind of see it here. Made this quilt, and I had this in a quilt, kind of like a bar. It was, a, it was like a, a wooden bar, kind of clamps down on it, and it was displayed in my dining room. It did never, it never had direct light, just the way that it was positioned up on the wall. There was no way for direct light to ever come in through like my patio door, but it was an ambient light because it was in my dining room and the dining room light was on a lot as well as some of the overhead can lights. Look at what happened to that fabric, how it faded over time with just ambient light. Notice how the reds and creams stayed vibrant and beautiful. And notice, you know, the quilt bar, of course, went all the way across the top. Notice how you do not see a difference on the reds, but on the blue, it couldn't be more obvious. And so I keep this quilt around. I obviously do not display this. It's an embarrassment to me, right? Because I didn't believe at that time that there really was a difference between the caliber of fabric made in, say, China and those made in South Korea and Japan, which is where the majority of quilting fabric is made is usually in those three nations. What we carry here at Shabby Fabrics is fabric made in South Korea and Japan. Some of our woven fabric, which we won't be touching on in this series, is made and woven in India. A very, a very proud nation. They make amazing fabric, high, high caliber fabric. You do not want to invest money and your time and, and potentially give this gift of a quilt and have this happen. It's a big embarrassment. I don't display the quilt anymore, but I keep it ar around as a reminder that there is a difference of quality of fabric. So um, I definitely want to share that with you so you'd have a chance to see firsthand. It, it, there, it's true. Now we talked about the pre-cuts. What's really great about pre-cuts, you can buy yardage, absolutely buy yardage, and on the Shabby Fabrics website, you can buy as small as a half a yard all the way up to how much we have available of any given fabric. But sometimes buying things pre-cut is really convenient. What's fun about pre-cut fabrics is they're usually coordinated in a collection. So let's bring out uh, some pre-cuts and we'll go through some new vocabulary terms. A lot of patterns today, quilting patterns, um, like to use pre-cuts because they're convenient and readily available at most quilt shops. So there is, here's, this is called a fat quarter. And I want to, I want to, again, this, these are new words. So you're going to hear fat quarter. It's just part, it's not a body part. <laughs> I've seen a lot of t-shirts that like a fat quarter is not a body part, right? Just to clarify that. So there's a quarter yard, which of course is nine inches. We cut this fabric to nine inches. Now, consequently, this is the selvage where you have the writing, you have color targets, it's rougher, it's thicker. This is 
This is salvage here and salvage here. You have two salvages. And from here to here is the width of the fabric. Another term for you. This, it salvage to fold to salvage. All right, and this is how fabric comes rolled on bolts. Now, this is a quarter yard. A full yard, of course, is 36 inches. So a quarter yard is nine inches all the way up the width of the fabric. How a fat quarter differs, it's the same literal square inches of fabric, but what we did was you cut twice that length at 18 inches, but notice how we cut at the fold. Why that's important and why that's useful is let's say that we're making a beautiful vase. We're gonna make an applique quilt where shapes are applied to a background and we're making a picture. Um, that, let's say that vase is 10 or 12 inches tall. It's not gonna fit on your quarter yard cut, but it would fit on this. So sometimes fat quarters are a more useful fabric depending on the project than a quarter yard up with the fabric cut. So these are some of the reasons that pre-cut fabrics and fat quarters in particular are very useful to people because it gives you options. If you're gonna piece a quilt, you're probably going to be going for standard with the fabric cuts, but if you're going to be doing applique, suddenly um, a fat quarter may be a, a more attractive solution for you. Now, one thing I want to point out about this particular collection, this is called Backyard Roses, is see how all the fabrics are beautifully coordinated. And that's what we mean by a collection. It was a well thought out um, array of fabrics that worked beautifully together. What's nice about buying fabrics in a collection is you don't have to worry about doing the coordinating of fabrics. That's been done for you. Pick out your favorite pattern, buy your favorite collection, go make your quilt. You don't have the, um, the task of then having to coordinate fabrics across different fabric collections. Now, one thing I wanna point out, a new term for you. I'm gonna show you one fabric. This is the exact same fabric, but in two different colorways. Colorway is a new word I want you to learn and that is very typical that in a collection, actually this is, I think this is, the, oh that's same fabric, that's right, let me put that aside. Got myself confused with that. It's typical in a fabric collection that you'll have one, it's a design, but it's in several colorways. So let me show you some more examples of that. Those are fat quarters. And we learned, so we learned what a fat quarter is and how it differs than a quarter yard cut and why it might be for, more useful for you. If you don't have a fabric stash, I would encourage you to begin to buy some fat quarter sets. It starts giving you a beautiful array of fabrics so that when you get ready to make your quilt, you have something to choose from. Um, let me bring out some other pre-cuts. There's the fat eighth pre-cut. That's another thing you might be seeing. A, an eighth of a yard cut is four and a half inches from salvage to fold back to salvage. It's a very skinny, long piece of fabric. You can imagine you have to have a pretty specific job for an eighth yard cut because it is so narrow. It's only four and a half inches. So if you need something that is a six inch wide strip, this isn't going to work for you. But there's something called a fat eighth. Again, when you have a fat of anything with regard to quilting, you double the actual length and you make the width half. So we, with a fat eighth, it's instead of it being four and a half, it's nine, but we cut that at the fold. It's the same square inches, but now maybe this is a more useful piece of fabric. So we have fat eighths Fat quarters are far more common, but we do have some fat eighth sets available as well. And if you go to the Shabby Fabrics homepage, again, click on fabrics, you'll get the drop down, go to pre-cuts. That's where you're going to see fat eighths, fat quarters, but then there's yet more to the story. I get excited about fabric. And what's even um, really exciting for us is we've now come out with two fabric collections that we have printed with Maywood Studios. They have some of the most beautiful, soft, what's called the hand of fabric. It's the touch that I fell in love with the hand of Maywood Studio Fabric. And that's why I design 
with Maywood Studio. Two collections out right now. Um, Welcome, uh, Welcome Home Collection 1. And then we have our Welcome Home uh, Flannel. And then our new collection is coming out very soon at Spring Market. I can't reveal the name right now. It's still a secret. Um, but subscribe to our newsletter. If you haven't already, just subscribe. And that way you will we'll know when brand new collections come out. And you'll be literally one of the first to know. More pre-cuts here. So exciting. So fun. Sometimes you're so excited to get going in a project. You don't want to cut the fabric yourself. You just want someone else to cut it so you can start sewing. That's the beauty of pre-cuts, and that's what these are all about. These are called jelly rolls. Obviously, they look like a jelly roll. Um, this is the Welcome Home Collection 1. What's fun about jelly rolls and these other pre-cuts is you get at least one of every fabric in that collection. It's a really neat sampler. So you are truly see the spectrum of what is in that collection. Sometimes, if a collection only has, say, 20 SKUs in it, you might get two of each strip. Typical jelly rolls have about 40 to 42 pieces, although some of the junior jelly rolls I've been seeing have only about 20. So these are, this is also a jelly roll, but this is flannel. You can see why it's so much thicker, why that's... And then these are called charms, mini charms and layer cakes. 10 inch squares, five inch squares, two and a half inch squares. Again, look at this beautiful array of fabric. You really get to have and see what's in there. Now, let me put things aside for now. We'll definitely clean up before we get quilting or before we get on to the next step. So I'll get all this cleared off soon, but let me show you, let me show you some of the different, um, different aspects of fabric. So this is the Welcome Home Flannel Collection. We're cold up here in North Idaho, so we really, really appreciate our flannel here. And boy, I, when we have movie night at the house, I, everyone's grabbing for the same flannel quilt. So I definitely need to make some more flannel quilts. Everybody wants that one, especially in the wintertime. So you can see the same fabric here, but in different colorways. We talked about the colorway. Um, a good composition of a quilt. Now, let me take two steps back. I made this out of very basic fabric. I didn't want to use a specific collection because I wanted these videos to be timeless. And I hope that once you learn how to quilt your first quilt, you're going to share the good news. Share this because quilting, the community of quilting is one of the most endearing, sweet. I've never met a stranger in quilting. There's an immediate connection. So share the video um, with your friends. Um, so I made this quilt be very basic fabrics that are very easily um, you could replace, these are solids and polka dots. That's all that's here. So I made it very simple so that if this particular collection sells out, it'll be very easy to replace those fabrics. But let's say we had made these, that quilt or another quilt in these different colorways. Notice how a collection typically, a good, a good quilt typically has a lot of variety in it. You've got a larger floral, a mid floral, something we call a ditzy print here. Um, this is called a two-tone or a tone on tone. And let me show you this one. I don't know if you can see it very well. Let's do the, the green one. This fabric is directional. You see how there's birds on here? Um, this is a directional fabric. I wouldn't want to piece that into my quilt and necessarily have those going sideways or upside down. So you want to be mindful of different types of fabric, polka dots, ginghams. And then, of course, we have um, this type of what we call modeled. Um, that's one of my favorite types of fabric. It's better than a solid, but it doesn't have a lot of action. It just has a lot of depth and it reminds me kind of of suede. So let's, let me check my notes here. Um, ah, yes. When you buy fabric, how much to buy? I remember this as an early quilter. I'd be like, um, can I get a quarter yard of that? Um, I have a beautiful, incredible stash of fabric that is nearly not usable to me at my home because in the very beginning, I didn't know how much to buy. Well, in order to be able to put borders on a quilt or use a fabric frequently, you probably need a little more than a quarter yard. So the rule of thumb, if you like a fabric, get a yard. If you love a fabric, get two yards. And if you cannot live without it, if your life is not gonna be the same unless you buy that fabric, get five yards of that fabric because fabric has a very short life in the industry. 
some manufacturers will release a collection and literally weeks if not a month later that fabric is discontinued already if you are planning fabrics for a quilt get all of your fabric at one time do not think well i'm not going to be at my borders for a couple months i'll get that later don't go don't do it don't do it because when that time comes that fabric may be gone and now you're left out to dry with now what do i do for my borders so that's just, a, I've experienced this. I, nobody kind of gave me the heads up that this isn't forever, right? These are only going to be here for a period of time. Um, so I'm going to get this cleared off. I want to get the process started um, of getting you going on quilting. When I come right back, I'll have a cleaned off table. We're going to have a sewing machine here. We're going to get going. Okay, now that the table's cleared off, we're ready to get going. Sewing machine. You need a good quality sewing machine. Uh, a lot of you may have been handed down a sewing machine. If you've been blessed to have a sewing machine um, and it's it sews straight, or at least it has the potential to sew straight, have it serviced, especially if it hasn't been used. Oil is going to sit inside the little motor and the various mechanisms in the sewing machine, and it just gets sluggish. So if you do have a sewing machine that you want to use, Again, I recommend, highly recommend you have it serviced before you start this series because there's nothing worse than a sewing machine where the thread keeps breaking or it, it's jamming and that just frustrates the process. This is fun. We want to have a great experience. So if you don't have a sewing machine, um, you do get what you pay for. So spend as much money as you're comfortable with. If you're not going to be doing hand embroidery, don't worry about buying a machine that has all those bells and whistles on it. This is a very basic sewing machine I've had literally for 20 years. I bought this from Sears. It's a Kenmore. Um, I also sew on a Singer Featherweight at times. I don't have expensive sewing machines because what I have here works for me. Um, all I wanted to do for me for the most part is sew a quarter inch straight stitch and sometimes a zigzag stitch and something called a blanket stitch. So if you are looking for a sewing machine, I want to encourage you to consider a local dealer. A sewing and back company is great. One of the benefits of that is they usually have classes associated with buying your machine and they're going to be able to talk you through all the parts of your sewing machine. They can answer all of your questions. Um, as you can imagine, uh, the different array of sewing machines, I couldn't possibly speak in knowledgeably about all of the different types of sewing machines. So that's not part of this series. Of course, you'll want to go either refer to a local dealer, maybe someone at a local quilt shop can help you if you're unfamiliar with your machine, or if you have your little operating handbook guide, go through that. But again, if you're looking for a sewing machine, consider a local dealer. They have classes. They're the same company that can service your sewing machine. Service it when you kind of notice, I would say at least once a year, but if you see a performance degradation before that year, take it in. As soon as you see things to start to go a little bit goofy, sometimes I'll rethread my sewing machine, thread at the top, thread in what's called the bobbin, new word, that's the thread that's in the bottom portion. Um, I rethread my machine, make sure that's all correct. If I'm still having skip stitching, just have your machine service, just get it over with. Um, the other thing too is a local dealer is going to have a warranty. Um, most sewing machines that you could buy on Amazon or buy wherever, you can get that, but no one's going to be able to hold your hand through understanding your sewing machine. Um, I mentioned straight stitch, of course, you need that. That's what quilting's all about. But sometimes, like on this cute little pillow, you might want to do a little decorative stitch on the, on the edge. That's where a zigzag comes in or something called a blanket stitch. Those are stitches you might be looking for on a machine when you're getting ready to select one. Um, Take the time, of course, like I said, to learn your machine and to thread it properly. Let's talk about thread. You spend all this money on fabulous fabric, but the actual glue that holds it all together is thread. That's a whole nother thing. All I'm going to say right now is that I have, again, in the beginning when I thought cheap fabric was like, okay, and there wasn't really a difference, and I thought, whatever, $1.99 thread was okay, there's not a difference wrong and wrong again. That's what I figured out is using good quality thread, 100% cotton thread is what I recommend for piecing. Decorative stitch on the top, you want to put the bling bling and the sulky and the this and the that and it's got sparkles and glitter, go for it. But when you're piecing a quilt, 
side by side and you want this thing to last generation after generation, washing after washing, buy Good Thread. I love the Superior Thread brand, um, 75 beautiful colors. It's 50 weight Egyptian cotton. That doesn't mean anything to you right now. We can go into thread more later if it's relevant. 100% cotton. I'm using 100% cotton fabric. I'm going to use 100% cotton thread, 50 weight Egyptian cotton. And here's the cool thing. See all these beautiful colors? You only need to use one color. That quilt was pieced with one color. This is kind of a like a just all, like a very light gray. Um, if you set your stitch length properly, you don't notice that because it's behind. You don't see any of that. You don't need to buy um, for piecing a large array. Now for stitching, you know, you might want to do a beautiful color. And that's where, th that's where this, this is like, this is like fruit salad for quilters. I mean, it's so beautiful and I absolutely have lots of colors. So when I want to do a fun decorative stitch um, around my butterfly, around my heart, you betcha, I'm pulling out that really fun thread and going for it. But for piecing, which is what we're doing with this project, um, this light, very light gray, and it's also in your notions kit is all that you need. Don't go cheap on your thread, 100% cotton. If you have old thread, throw it out, forget it. A lot of times cotton rots, right? So um, get rid of old thread or unknown thread and just get some good quality. Again, this is the masterpiece. Um, we certainly have that available. Um, so we've talked about thread, quarter inch presser foot. There's something called a seam allowance. Let me go over what that is. You have two fabrics, right? Well, when you sew them together, you have, let me go on this side, it might be easier to see. It's kind of hard to see here. You have a certain distance from the edge of that fabric over that the stitching begins. That's a quarter of an inch is standard for quilting, standard. Do not deviate from that standard. Um, for that reason, a lot of sewing machines, one of the presser foots, new word for you, this is the actual it does the, the exact job it says. I put the fabric in, I lower it, it presses it down, it sews through the machine. Um, a lot of machines have a quarter inch, quarter inch presser foot um, that you can purchase separately. Most machines don't come with that. It's an add-on and they're fairly affordable. 10 to $20 is all that that costs. That's an option. Um, and given that internet, I mean, you most likely can buy the quarter inch foot. That is your first and most desirable option. However, let's say that you've looked and looked and you can't find one. There is a way to establish your own quarter inch, but you must establish the quarter inch. That is absolutely critical to quilting and you have to master that. Now, the cool thing is, especially if you've bought the kit, we have included practice fabric in there for you. And I'm going to show you how to establish your quarter inch if you don't have a quarter inch pressing foot. I deliberately did not include a quarter inch pressing foot on my machine today so that we're going to walk through the hard way of figuring out a quarter inch in case you're in that same boat. Um, again, if you've bought the quilt, we've put some practice fabric in there. So you're going to be able to practice mastering that quarter inch. You're going to practice cutting, which we'll get to shortly, and then sewing. Um, so I wanted to quarter inch seam, right? Then I want to get ahead of myself here. Um, first thing we want to do, the, the elements of quilting, this is a big secret. Quilting is easier than a lot of people want you to believe it is. Good quality fabric. You have used some sizing and gotten all the wrinkles out. And then you're going to square up your fabric with accurate cutting using a proper rotary mat, a sharp rotary blade, and a rotary cutter, holding your ruler steady, you're going to be very disciplined about that quarter inch seam and very disciplined about pressing. You are going to have a beautiful quilt. That is all there is to this whole process. And that to me is good news. It's far less complicated than I ever thought that it was. And you're going to soon uh, decide that and discover that for yourself. So the first thing we want to do here before I jump over to establishing that quarter inch seam is let's just talk about um, cutting. It's a big deal. You can get hurt cutting. These things are dangerous, okay? This rotary cutter should not, cannot, must not be left on the table like this. That did happen um, when I was working here at Shabby Fabrics. I saw the rotary cutter out of the corner of my eye. I was in a hustle. 
I reached over and grabbed it. My entire palm was cut in the shape of an arc. And, you know, that was a pretty painful. I didn't have to have stitches. Thank goodness. I didn't grab it that hard. You must not leave this open. If you have kids, grandkids, any, put this away. They, kids, you know how they play with stuff. They kind of mess around. Um, this is a, my favorite rotary cutters, all different styles. There's ones that when you push down, um, the guard goes away. If you have a rotary cutter that you like better than this, use it. If you're getting our notions kit, just a reminder, close the blade. You make a strip, you cut it down, even if you're coming back to this, you think you're going to come back to this 30 seconds later, don't do it. Phone rings, doorbell rings. Oh, there you go. And that's left up there waiting to hurt somebody. So just don't even go there. It's just a matter of, even if you have to put, close your blade up on your rotary mat until it's a matter of habit and it will be. That's a good um, reminder for yourself. Um, sizing. You know how when you buy clothes, they're kind of stiff until you wash it and now they kind of relax. Well, it's kind of nice when fabric has a little bit more stiffness to it when you quilt. It keeps things a little more accurate when you're sewing and when you're pressing. Um, also, sometimes, like we showed you before, fabric has, goes to the selvage. It has that very hard fold and comes back down to the selvage. How do you iron that out without some kind of moisture? I don't recommend just straight water. I really like sizing. Um, it works super well. And um, that's just kind of what we, how we get that, that, that hard line um, folds out in particular. So let's get our fabric out. We've got our iron set to all the way, right? I go all in my hottest setting whenever I use that. <laughs> it's just like every iron, you know, if you don't use it, it kind of like has that auto shut off feature. So we're going to wait for this to warm back up. But in the meantime, this is the two fabrics in your practice kit. If you're getting the uh, quilt kit, that'll be included. And you, this is for you. This is your playground. This is for you to cut. This is for you to sew. This is for you to really practice good habits. Now, sizing. Um, this is the magic sizing. It's available everywhere. This is the light body. Really recommend this product. Um, I'm just going to give a spray. I don't have to completely coat everything. Now, in the beginning, I'm just going to iron like you're ironing clothes. Later, when we get into actually pressing seams open, it is a press down. It is not this lateral movement. Here, I just my whole goal is to just get this all smoothed out. And you always want to press before you cut. Because if you cut your strips and then press, um, try to press out big wrinkles, you're going to distort that strip. So you want to do this step ahead of time. So that's ready to go. And let's just quickly do that again with our pink. Obviously, these two fabrics, we picked high contrast fabrics um, only so that you would be able to very much see if you have any errors or how you're doing. But um, this is going to be what you will be working with. And then once you have that accurate cutting, quarter inch seam allowance, you're pressing, then you'll be ready to make block one, which will start actually in video number two. Now we are already talking about doing a, an intermediate uh, quilt as well, where we're kind of taking a little more advanced blocks, learning more vocabularies, more tips and tricks, more um, techniques. So again, if you haven't already subscribed, just click down below, subscribe, and that way you will be the first to know about those series. So I have those pressed and ready to go. Now you can, of course, cut those fabrics at the same time, but you're a beginner. Let's not do that. Let's cut one fabric at a time. As you can see, I kind of shuffle things off to the side trying to just make my space. I am a messy quilter. <laughs> I went to a quilt retreat and I had like a space that was like, I don't know about this way. I'm like, there's no way. I, I, I just spread out. It's just how I am. So if you are, a, well, I, I consider myself a messy quilter. Um, you're in good company. So don't, don't worry about that. Um, we put the sizing and we do recommend sizing. Actually, I might have sized to the wrong, to the right side, but I do recommend putting sizing actually on the wrong side of the fabric. Sometimes if you put too much, that sizing can be kind of white and flaky, at least then it's on the back side. So not a huge deal. If you do sizing on the front, obviously you could get that flakiness off. Um, okay. Let's put our first strip out. Now I, you can see there's some, you know, 
there's some uh, threads there. When you get a piece of fabric, you have to do what's called, um, you kind of clean it up, you kind of square it up. Now, you have to have some kind of reference, right? There's lines on the ruler, uh, lines on the ruler, there's lines on the mat. You've got uh, your line here going horizontal. Notice how even the salvage isn't completely straight, but I've got to start with something, right? So we want to get an edge established. We're not going to just start cutting strips. We get cleaned up, clean up that edge, and then we start cutting. We're going to cut two inch strips. So I'm basically have my selvage kind of running parallel to this line. I'm going to take the ruler and you have, I have a 10 here and I have a 10 here. You could, again, there's nothing magical about me lining up necessarily on that. You could start anywhere. I'm just going to get that so that this, where that ruler hits on that line that goes to 10 here and 10 here is the same. Now how I, I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, this is obviously going to be reversed. I, I don't want to hold the ruler down here because as I push away, that's a lot of leverage up here that the ruler is just going to go away. Um, there's all kinds of things you can get for the back side of your ruler that give it a little more grip so it doesn't want to slide away. Again, those are going to come in time. I don't want to introduce too many new products right now. I just want you to get used to being able to secure your ruler. So I don't hold it here. I hold it more here with my hands kind of fanned out and my pinky is actually onto the mat kind of as a stopper. Now don't get your fingers too close to that or you're going to trim your nails. And again, there's all kinds of devices that might be a handles that might keep your hands further away. We certainly use those here at Shabby Fabrics. I'm just going to teach you the raw method and then you might be able to supplement with products that you like. So I try to keep my hands, fingers far away because have I ever rode up on top of this? Absolutely, I have. I've trimmed me these nails. I have been cut with rotary cutters. So be careful. Um, you're gonna open your blade and you need to start pushing down actually before you get to the fabric so that when you get to the fabric, you're already pushing down and you're just gonna be, it's an extension of your arm. And I, my hips are, are really kind of pressed into the table. I'm short and this table is a little bit taller than I would typically cut on. So I'm going to have this here, bracing my hand. It's one motion and I'm going to close that blade right at the end. And now that's gone. Now I'm going to now move to the lines on my ruler and you can see here, here's the number two. I'm going to line that edge up. In fact, let me get my glasses on. I want to see this absolutely accurately here. I am now making sure that fabric hits on the very same part of my ruler. And when I feel confident that I am at that place, I'm going to again, brace my hand, open the rotary cutter up. Oh, let me move that slightly. I didn't like what I just saw. The, the old adage, you know, the measure twice cut one thing really applies. Put my hand here, brace, start pushing. I make contact with the fabric. I push all the way through, close the blade. Now I have my two inch strip. Okay. So you get the idea. Now you're going to cut. Um, uh, let me just cut one quickly out of the pink again. This is probably good for you to see me clean it up. There's the salvage. I'm kind of just bait. Now I'll line up on the 11. It just landed there. Maybe we'll do the 12. I like 12. 12 is a good number. Um, we're going to just line this up. I'm going to, again, put that ruler down. I've got my 12 here. I've got my 12. I'm starting with something, right? I got something going for me. Brace my hand, pinky off to the edge. Blade is open. I'm pushing down. I'm actually up on my tippy toes right now. <laughs> the stable is tall for me. Now, now we move to the lines on the ruler. The lines on the ruler, I have heard some people say are more accurate than the lines on a mat. I don't know if that's true. Um, I only heard that fairly recently and I've obviously made a lot of quilts, you know, that, that I was really referencing only the mat. So don't get too caught up in that talk. If you hear that, um, I think it all kind of works out in the very end. Two inches. Here we go. All right. 
Now, when you're practicing, and I, what I want you to be doing is, well, let me show you what we did do. We ended up just sewing little pieces together. I don't want you sewing a big long strip together. I want to subcut these. New word, subcut. We use our big six by 24 inch ruler for long width of fabric cuts like that. Um, you can see now why having a bigger mat is so important. My first mat I ever bought was 18 by 24. I was always off the mat. And it was very frustrating because then I have to shift my fabric and it, then errors come in. When you move fabric and cut it again and cut it again, that's when errors come in. So if you can cut that in one long pass, that's desirable. Um, once you've made that cut and now I want to subcut, the big ruler goes away. And that's why in your notions kit, we've given you this, oh, I'm going to tell you something, the most amazing ruler I have ever used. I was recently introduced to this Creative Grids. Um, this is a four and a half by eight and a half inch ruler. There is so much thought that went into this ruler. As we walk through this quilt, the obviousness of the brilliance behind this ruler will become apparent to you. Because to me, I'm like, that's ah, a ruler. No, as we walk through this quilt, especially in the flying geese block, wow, the intelligence behind this became so apparent. We're going to be using that ruler. Um, and let me show you, let me check my notes here. Let's make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Um, so we're going to step cut several rectangles. It gives you a little more of a chance. Um, we're working right now on, on good cutting, good sewing coming up. So you don't want to just do this whole thing at once. Let's cut it into some smaller sections. We sew it, we measure it. How did we do? We're not quite where we want to be. Let's make some adjustments. So that's why we're going to sub cut. So what does that all mean? That's where the smaller ruler comes into play. So let's bring that out. Selvage, all right? First thing you're going to do that I like to do, selvage is away. Selvage is not part of a quilt. It is used in the fabric manufacturing process, but it is not to be used in the quilt. That gets cut, that's trash. Um, some people though nowadays, especially on selvages that have that decorative like um, color targets and the name, keep that and they're making cute little handbags and stuff out of it. So you might want to keep that um, for projects and maybe not. That's up to you. I'm just going to bring my ruler up and I'm just going to clean that. I, I want to make sure I'm not using that. Um, so let's see here. Let's just cut some strips to, I don't know, anything you want. It could be seven inches. Let's just consistently do that. And then we're going to cut another strip. So you get the idea. Sub cutting is just you're doing a smaller ruler to a prescribed length. Now we've cut some of that ahead of time. Let me get this out of the way here. We're going for precision today. All right. So I've got a couple of different, couple of different ones. With a solid, it's hard to tell what the right and wrong side is, right? But with a print, right side, wrong side, it's very obvious. When you sew strips together, you put the right side, again, you know, um, we're going to call this the right side, all right? In fact, we can, even, we can even just put right side. I'm definitely off my notes now. I'm definitely on the fly here making this up. Right side to right side is how this works. You take this to the sewing machine and you sew a quarter inch and then you press that seam. So what we're going to ultimately, what that's ultimately going to look like, I just want to show you the steps in that. It's easier to actually see it from this side. Put together, right sides together, sew the quarter inch. Then we're going to press the seam to the side and this is what it's going to look like. So I wanted to show you what the goal is so I can take you on the journey of how to get to that place. You've cut these very accurately. Good job. We talked about the quarter inch seam allowance. If you can go get the quarter inch presser foot, that's your first option. But let's say you can't. Let's pull out the super cool ruler again. I want to point out something. There is a dashed line here on this side and it says quarter inch. You're going to use that right now with your sewing machine. If you don't have a sharp needle, this is something else that is actually not on my notes, but I want to mention it to you right now. Needles. I figured you change your needle when it broke, right? <laughs> you know, if it's the old adage, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Well, it kind of isn't true when it comes to needles. Um, if you've been sewing for 
a lot, if you're sewing every day, change your needle. I think, I think some people say like every 20 hours, 30 hours, because obviously it's going, it's doing a lot of work. So again, if you've been, get, if you've gotten a hammy down, I put a fresh needle in there. All right, let's talk about that needle. If you don't have that quarter inch presser foot, one of the things you can do using your creative grid ruler that's in your notions kit is you're going to put this underneath your machine. It's a little bit hard to see on camera. I'm going to lower my needle until it is literally going down through that line. And then I want to make sure that it's square. There are so certain lines I have already on my presser foot. Excuse, yes, kind of in the presser foot area. So I, my ruler is now parallel to them because you have to square up, right? Parallel to them and that needle is going straight down, just gently touching that quarter inch, quarter inch line. Now, you can use painter's tape or what's this called gaffing tape that our videographer, thank you, Kevin, um, let us use. And you would simply lie this, let's get the thread out of the way. Oh, we gotta square that up again. And you are going to layer this down here. Okay, like this. Now you are going to want to include several layers. What you're building is basically a ridge that your fabric will ride along. So when you're feeding that fabric through, it's riding right along that edge. You're gonna to wanna to keep building that up. This, as you can see, a quarter inch presser foot is obviously your first choice. Um, this is a, a decent solution. There's lots of different guides out there on the market. This is just one idea that you can do that's kind of an immediate solution. Again, lots of products on the market that help establish the quarter inch. You may hear the term scant quarter inch where it's just a, like a breath under that. We're just gonna sew a true quarter inch today. I'm not gonna get involved in the scant quarter inch um, for this particular project. So we've established our line and my fabric will be riding right along that gaffing tape. Again, thank you to Kevin. So we're gonna take our fabrics. You've made sure that your machine is properly threaded and that you also have that same good quality masterpiece or 100% cotton thread in the bobbin as well, and that it's properly wound. Now, it's very important with my particular machine, and some do not behave this way. If I don't hold my threads, I think I got that under the tape, I did. If I don't hold my threads, it kind of sucks it up and makes a complete mess, um, either on, on my fabric, in my sewing machine, or both. I line my fabrics up precisely I'm going to I'm going right along that ridge and I'm bringing the presser foot down all right so my fabric is now paralleling it I'm hanging on with my thread until I get stitching and I got my fabric off just slightly then once we're a couple stitches into that I will let go of that thread because it's no longer at risk of being kind of sucked into the machine or creating a mess on my um, fabric so let's get started. Where I'm looking right now is making sure that my fabric is paralleling my tape. If you have a quarter inch pressing foot, you're looking at that place on that right side to make sure that you are not going past it or less than that. It's riding right along that. So let's keep going. And you're just going to sew right off the end. You lift up the presser foot, pull that. Now my machine has a thread cutter here, so I can just cut that. Some machines, like of course my featherweight doesn't have that. I'm, you know, doesn't have any of those types of bells and whistles. I keep a pair of simple scissors. These are part of your Notions kit. Um, they're inexpensive scissors. You're not going to do major cutting with this. This is just for thread snipping. Snip the threads. I don't, I leave just a little bit beyond um, maybe an eighth of an inch. Now let's put that aside here. Now here comes pressing. Forget ironing. You're not ironing your, your blouse or your pants. You're now pressing. So the first thing that we like to do is we set a seam. 
setting esteem is something that actually, I'll, I'll be honest, is very somewhat new to me. Um, I have not taken a quilting class, if you can believe that. I am basically self-taught. Just asked lots of questions, got books at the library, um, and have been able to kind of work my way through the magical journey of learning how to quilt. And I learn new stuff all the time. Literally, I learned something new yesterday. Um, setting the seam seems to, oh, that thing cooled down again. We'll fire it back up. I go all the way full hot, by the way, when I'm working with cotton fabric, all the way up. Hot, hot, hot. Um, uh, setting the seams, as I've heard, helps relax um, the fabric. It's a little more pliable when things are warm. They tend to be a little easier to press open. So we're going to press, in this instance, we can, let's just press toward the, the green. So I'm just going to, with my fingers, that's the cool thing too about setting a seam. You can, the fabric's very pliable. You can nearly press it open with your fingers. So now we're just going to press. I'm not doing this. I'm pressing up the seam, trying to make sure that I don't have a fold here. You can imagine that would be very easy to do. I'm trying to make sure there's no fold there. All right, and we're just gonna press. Um, now we're going to take this to our mat. So let's do a little bit of math. We had, let's get some strips back out here so we can talk about this. We had a two inch strip and we had a two inch strip. And we have a quarter inch seam away from the pink, right? We, we lost a quarter inch when we sewed that together and we have a quarter inch seam on this side. So this is gonna measure one and three quarter sewn together and this is going to measure one and three quarter together, that's three and a half. What I want you to do to, to see if your sewing, your cutting and your sewing and your pressing is accurate is you will now take your ruler to your fabric and that should measure exactly, let's see here. This is a very cool ruler. I am still getting familiar with that. So here's my three and a half. Let's put that along the exact edge and I am exactly along the three and a half inch line, which is wonderful. One thing I didn't mention about this ruler is look how it's color coded. On this side, the white dots are one, two, three, and four. On that side, it's a half, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half. Brilliant, well thought out, well engineered. So you get the idea. These strips are for you to practice on. Let's say that doesn't measure three and a half then I want you to go back. That's why we gave you a full fat eighth of each of those two fabrics. Go back and recut, right? Start again. It was either a cutting error, a sewing error, or a pressing error. Most likely it's a cutting or sewing error. If you've pressed, you shouldn't have errors there. It's here or it's here. And the most likely culprit is actually the quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm um, just giving you some pointers. Practice, practice, practice. Now, one thing quilters don't like to, we like to sew, but we don't like to unsew. But sometimes you do have to unsew something. Something was sewn together wrong. Oh boy, I'll tell you, I've done plenty, plenty of incorrect sewing. I wanna show you quickly how to use the seam ripper. This is included in the notions kit again. Now, when you seam rip, I love the clover one. This is an inexpensive item. Very important that you have a good quality seam ripper. Let's say you wanted to take some stitches out. You don't need to pluck out each and every single thread. If you go about every five inches, notice how I hold this very horizontally. I'm just gonna um, start here, and then I'll probably go every oh, fourth or fifth. I'm just gonna break that, break that, keep going. What's nice about not plucking out every single thread, as you're gonna see, is you can do this very quickly. Do not be tempted to live accept errors. You know, you want to have your quilts represent a true reflection of your ability. If you have a, a very significant error, get the seam ripper out and get that going. Just get that ripped out. Now, all I have to do is grab that thread and it just pulls out. The whole idea behind seam ripping 
is obviously to make a correction, but you don't want to disturb that fabric. You don't want to just start leafing on that and distorting the fabric because you could potentially um, either distort it or even you could put a hole in it. This is very, very sharp. So get a good quality seam ripper or just get the notions kit, it'll be included. Um, now your job, your job is to go practice. Your job is to get that practice fabric you're getting that sizing, you're getting your materials, you're doing the good accurate cutting, you have good disciplined methods for your quarter inch seam allowance. And when we come back with video two, we're gonna jump into this quilt. This is the exciting journey. And I'm gonna take you through block, uh, the red, red block and we're just gonna walk through this quilt. So good job, you're on your way. Your job is to practice. I'll see you soon in video two.